power station burning coal. producing coal. And running between the two, a merry-go-round train carrying coal. for every foot of the train. Coal round the circuit and round the clock. Over one million tons a week. Just consider how we've improved on the past. In those days, all sorts of empty wagons were trundled up to the high end of the colliery yard, where each would take its turn in the queue to be weighed empty and then loaded. No more than one wagon could be filled at a time. The coal trickled through slowly as it was produced. And if you weren't careful, a wagon would run away down the slope unless securely braked. Only a few full wagons at a time could be run back down the gradient. They had to be controlled by a man with a brake stick. Often it was the same man who loaded the wagons. The full wagons ambled to another weighhouse where their loaded weights were recorded. A weigh ticket was made out for each of them and only then could they depart for the sidings. In the sidings they stood and waited, and waited. They continued to wait until a railway loco arrived with a raft of empty wagons. The empties disappeared up the yard to join the queue. The full wagons were taken away for delivery to a power station. When they arrived, they had to wait again in the sidings until they could be emptied. The discharge point at the power station could only take a few wagons at a time, not the whole of the train. A dozen wagons or so, at most, would be taken from the sidings to where the coal would be emptied by upturning the wagons. The empties were pushed beyond the tipplers and collected for return to the sidings. They stood once more until they were returned to a colliery. Wagons spent most of their time empty or as storage bins. No continuous flow as now. The system, such as it was, could only cope while there was a modest demand for electricity. With the great upsurge in demand that came in the 60s, as much as five million tons a year would be required for each new coal-fired power station. With the existing system, a daily delivery of 30,000 tons was out of the question. The movement and handling of coal had to be revolutionized. What happens today? At the colliery, there is a separate track that leads from the main line to a large overhead coal bunker from which the merry-go-round train is loaded. The merry-go-round train, a high-powered loco pulling a set of purpose-built wagons, travels directly to the loading point. There is never any need to store wagons or break up the train. The train works as a unit, its wagons loaded while on the move. The train approaches the bunker at about three miles per hour. 
the loading speed will be even slower. The wagons are weighed automatically whilst on the move, before and after loading. Track sensors are triggered by the wheels as they pass over the weighbridge, and the axle weights are signalled to a computer. The empty wagon weights are computed from these and recorded on a printout. The train travels through the bunker house. As soon as it is clear, the bunker operator will signal it to stop. It will be a smooth stop, as each wagon is equipped with an air brake. Men with brake sticks belong to the past. The train is now recalled for loading. It reverses all the way back at half a mile per hour, the most suitable loading speed. In the old days, coal was loaded into wagons as it was produced. Any stoppage in production meant delay in loading. Now the coal is stored in overhead bunkers so that stocks are always available. An operator knows to a nicety how to fill a wagon. The bunkers can store up to 3,000 tonnes of coal. Clamshell doors worked hydraulically release the coal over the full length of the bunker. Four wagons are loaded simultaneously, each one holding around 32 tons. A full train load averages nearly a thousand tons. As the train emerges from the bunker, it passes again over the electronic weighbridge, which calculates the full wagon weights. These are set against the previous weights by the computer to arrive at the actual load. An average train will take about 25 minutes to load. Turnaround time, including arrival and departure, some 60 minutes. Then it's off to the power station. Up to a dozen collieries may serve a single power station, with as many as 30 merry-go-round trains running into the station over distances of 20 miles or more. Every merry-go-round train runs to a timetable but the system is sufficiently flexible to allow trains to be diverted quickly to other power stations if the need arises. Trains now run at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, much faster than the old unbraked trains with vastly reduced journey time. On arrival at the power station, the train slows to 15 miles per hour. It enters a loop line this is a continuous track running through the unloading point and around the site to join the main line. The incoming train is signalled to one of two tracks leading over the hoppers to which the coal will be dropped. Twin tracks allow two trains to be emptied at the same time. The train moves forward at half a mile per hour. As the train enters the hopper house, the loco triggers off the sensors that actuate the auto tripping gear. Cams release the safety catches on the wagons. In sequence following that, other trackside equipment opens the three pairs of bottom doors on the wagons to allow the coal to drop out. Because the sides of the wagons are steeply sloped, the coal can run out freely and rapidly. There is an even distribution of coal over the length of the hopper. Five wagons at a time drop their coal. The sequence is continuous. As the wagons emerge, both sides are viewed for wear and tear. The pairs of bottom doors are closed automatically. The safety catches reset. 
all these operations are completed on the move. The train continues progress around the loop, slowly getting nearer towards the main line. Within half an hour, the whole of the 1,000 ton load has been discharged. Again, the overall turnaround time will be about an hour. When the train is ready to leave, it will travel by the departure track. The speed increases and will pick up to 45 miles per hour once the train has left the power station. The train runs straight back to the colliery. So the merry-go-round goes on. Cooperation between the railways, the generating board and the coal board has paid off handsomely. In days past, we needed around 200,000 wagons to move some 30 million tons. Now over 60 million tons are being moved far more efficiently by only 10,000 wagons. How's that for improvement? <laughs>